All right, Shalom, Shalom. This is your brother Shamak out of the Great Millstone Atlanta camp. Before I get started, I want to give all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rachakwadash, Yahweh being the Heavenly Father's true name and His only begotten Son, whose name being Yahweh Shai, both in the Hebrew language, whom the world incorrectly and ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ. Also, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well, and who are the true leaders of the Hebrew Israelites within these last days. Also, I want to give a shalom to all the sincere brothers that's pushing, teaching truth worldwide. And shalom to all you sincere listeners and you sincere believers out there, okay? Wanted to come with a lesson concerning that life and death could come down to the details, okay? And I'm concerning that with the service and the worshipers of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, to whom much is given, hey, what much is required, okay? Into the spirit of like being on, being on point, being keen, clever, wise, sh uh, sharp, you know, being on point in all in all spectrums. What especially have especially what's regarding or concerning the ministry of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, whatever comes to mind, of you know, uh, what's big or small. Okay, is it, it can and, you know details are are, are are minute. Okay, they're small. All right, but they matter so much, okay? So I just want to bring forth uh, just a few accounts to show, you know, how our steer our Lord is, man, okay? And what it can come down to, all right? And what may seem in the eyes of, of, of man or in the eyes of the flesh very, very harsh, but, hey, that's the ways of the Lord. That's, that's the power that we serve, you know? So I want to read Isaiah chapter 55, starting in verse 7. It reads, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. See, our thoughts, man, we know the heart. Like the scriptures mentioned in Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, it mentions uh, the heart is deceitful above all things. You know, so our own mind, you know, we can be, you know, you, could, you can fool yourself. All right. You can fool yourself. All right. But with those thoughts, okay, those thoughts can be demonic. They can be, they can be wrong. They can be evil. All right. Incorrect. All right. Continue on. It says, let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him into our power, for he will abundantly pardon. Yeah, we're looking to be pardoned. We're looking to receive mercy from our power in the, in the times that we're living in now, especially in these times we're living in, okay? And what we're reading with the Holy Bible and the Holy Scriptures, hey, these things were written for our learning. You know, it's for us to re uh, read upon, believe, reminisce, okay? You know, and, and take heed unto it. Verse 8. All right, it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So, yeah, once again, coming out, you know, concerning the details, what may not seem <laughs> a big deal, you know, you know, to you or to us, you know, to the Lord, it can be a very, very big deal. All right, as is what's exemplified in the uh, few accounts that I have here. All right, so I want to go to Numbers 15. All right, Numbers chapter 15, I want to start up. Uh, verse uh, 27 okay so this is numbers chapter 15 this is in the, and of course this account as you see here all right you see here sabbath breaking punished okay so this is concerning all right the man that was picking up sticks on the sabbath all right what may have seemed you know not oh you know a huge deal all right cost him cost him his life all right so this is and which is man that put fear that put fear into us man we want to we want to receive salvation we want to receive deliverance in these times that we're living in all right for ourselves in our households okay so this is number shot to 15 verse 27 so yeah these these scriptures are deadly serious these, these the ministry is deadly serious to us everything is man we we take we take everything to heart man okay so this is number shot to 15 all right verse 27 and it reads and if any soul sin through ignorance then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. All right. Verse 28. And now through our offering is made through Yahweh Shai. Okay. But this, this is what was taking place in the ancient time. All right. Before Yahweh Shai came on the scene. All right. Well, verse 28. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly. All right. Yeah. We could just, just ignorantly would. But you just did not know. You were not aware of. Okay. When he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord to make an atonement for him. And now our atonement is made through Yahweh Shai. All right. He atoned for our sins by what through, through the crucifixion. All right. For all the for all the sins of the nation of Israel. 
Okay? It says, And it shall be forgiven him. Verse 29, Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. So it's the same for both. All right, verse 30. But the soul that doeth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproach of the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. So yeah, so the one that does, you know, these things purposely or, or doing these things knowing, you know, knowing the laws, statutes, and commandments. All right? Knowing the will of the Lord, basically. All right? To, you know, sum it all up. Uh, verse 31. Because he have despised the word of the Lord and have broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. So this is hey, this is to show you that the Lord, once he gives, once he's, when he once he once he instructed something to take place, that's exactly what he means. Okay, that's exactly what he means, and you and you about to be seen. Numbers chapter fifteen, verse thirty-two. Once again, Sabbath breaking punished. All right. So Numbers chapter fifteen, verse thirty-two, and it reads, and while the children of Israel were in the wilderness. They found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day, and they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation, and they put him in a ward, all right, because it was not declared what should be done unto him. Yeah, so basically prison, all right, jail. Verse 35, and the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall be surely put to death. You see, you see that? Hey, we, pff, this is the power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh all right, this is the power we serve, which is, man, it's fearful. All right, it's fearful as hell, okay? <clears throat> this from picking up sticks on the Sabbath, man, he shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall, shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. And that's a, that's a man, that, that's, a, that's a painful death, all right, being stoned to death. It says that he died as the Lord commanded Moses, all right? That puts that fear into, into the men back then and, into, and even to us thousands of years later, okay? Thousand years later, man, all right? So, the, uh, on to the next account, which is also in the book of Numbers, all right? Just wanted to bring upon that account concerning the man that was basically put to death for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day, all right? Well, we know the, stab, the Sabbath day, what is the day of rest, all right? A day of rest and it's a reverence, the Lord, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, okay? So, this is Numbers chapter 20. <sighs> Numbers chapter 20. I'll start at, yeah, I'm sorry at the top. So, this is Numbers chapter 20, um, verse 1. And this, and this is concerning Moses, all right? Moses, basically, I just, you know, I just say it. Moses basically not being able to enter the promised land by not taking full full instructions from from the Lord not taking you know fully all right doing exactly what the Lord commanded Moses to do all right as we're about to see in, in this account of Numbers chapter 20 so this is Numbers chapter 20 verse 1 it reads then came the children of Israel even the whole congregation into the desert of Zin in the first month and the people abode in Kadesh and Miriam died there and was buried there and there was no water for the congregation and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. So, yeah, the Israelites, we know our people. We know our people, man. They're going to let you know when there's a problem. They're going to let you know when they have something to say. They're going to let you know <laughs> how they feeling, okay? So they, they're coming against Moses and Aaron. Verse 3, and the people chode with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we have had died when our brethren died before the Lord? And why have ye brought up the, the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness? That we and our cattle should die there. So they're complaining. They're complaining, man. They're coming at Moses and Aaron. And we know how annoying this can be. Especially if you and we are we are in a, a leadership position, all right, or a lot, set up, especially set up by the Lord, which was which was this case for Moses and Aaron, the priesthood. All right. Verse uh five, it says, And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt? Because that hey, they, we the Israelites were delivered out of Egypt. Okay, delivered out of captivity, out of slavery, and we're still complaining. Okay, this is this is our people to the T. All right, this is how we know that we are the people of the Bible. Okay, but it says to bring us in unto this evil place. It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. 
Verse 6, And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Yeah, they, they you know, they're leading, they're leaders of the people. You know, they stressed out. They're, they're being attacked. You know, they're, they're being come against. You know, they, they, they feel the pressure. Okay. It says, And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Verse 8, look at the, this. These are the instructions here. It says, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so that shalt it says, So thou shalt give the congregation in their breast, shlaki, in their beast, drink. Okay? And Moses took the rod from, from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock as, as they were instructed. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. Must we fetch you? Must we fetch you water out of this rock? You hear? So you can, you see this term here, you rebels. Yeah, because our people are rebellious people. You can, you can tell Moses what was pissed off. He was frustrated of how of how the Israelites were coming against him post deliverance. You know, after being delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians, out of the hand of the Africans, the Hamites. Okay, you can you can you can that this term you can you hear now it says here now you rebels. Okay. You can, he just fed up. You can, you can hear it through the, through the words, man. Verse 11. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. So he hit the rock hard as hell twice. It says, and the water came out abundantly, as the Lord, as the Lord, as the Lord said it would. It says, and the congregation drank in their beasts also, because it was so much. It says, it said abundantly. All right, but the point being, the point being, that Moses did not speak unto the rock. Okay? He hit the rock twice. Alright, so he didn't he he what? He didn't take he didn't fully take heed and it came down to the details. You know, it came down because he still gathered the congregation to the rock. He still went into the rock, but he didn't speak unto it. He hit it twice. Alright, it came down to the details, man. And for that, verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believe me not. To sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. So basically Moses and Aaron wasn't, they weren't allowed. And this was Moses who the Lord used to give the laws, statutes, and commandments to the children of Israel that makes up the Torah. The first five books of the Bible. Alright. So that lets you, man, that just lets you know there the 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 seriousness all right, of our Lord, man. Okay. And it's fearful. All right, it's very, very fearful, okay? So, with that being the second account, I'm going to grab one more account with uh, Uzzah, okay? Uzzah with 2 Samuel concerning, concerning the Ark of the Covenant, okay? Concerning moving the Ark at that. So, this is 2 Samuel chapter 6. You know what? And I'm going to grab, so like, let me get the instructions before reading this account, Numbers chapter 4. <clears throat> the instructions with moving the ark. Because the Lord instructed them to, hey, that you weren't to touch the ark. Even if if you if you were uh even if they were Levites, they were they were to move it uh the ark a certain way. So just to grab a few of those instructions, this is Numbers chapter 4. And I started at verse 12. Yep. So this is Numbers chapter 4, verse 12, and it reads. And they shall take all the instruments of the ministry. Yeah, cause, and that's how, that's why I mentioned before. Everything, especially things concerning the ministry within the life we live, man, which is damn near everything, okay? It can, a life and death can come down to the details, all right? It says, and they shall take all the instruments of, of the ministry wherewith they minister in the sanctuary and put them in a, clo in a cloth of blue and cover them with a covering of badger skin and shall put them on a bar. And they shall take away the ashes of, of from the altar and spread a purple cloth thereon. So look, these are like, these are detailed instructions, man. Verse 14, and they shall put upon it all the vessels thereof wherewith they minister about it, even the censers, the flesh hooks, and the shovels, and the, and the basins, all the vessels of the altar. And they shall spread it upon it, a covering of basher skin, and put to the, to the staves of it. And when Aaron and his sons had made an end of the covering of the sanctuary and all the vessels 
of the sanctuary as the camp is to set forward. After that, the sons of Kahath shall come to bear it, but they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. Okay, these things are the burden of the sons of Kahath in the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay, so these are these are an example of the instructions in moving the ark. Okay, so let me grab. Oh yeah, so go back to Second Samuel chapter six. All right, so Second Samuel chapter six, verse one, it reads again. David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand, and David arose and went with all the people that were with him from ba from <coughs> Baal of Judah. If I'm, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Salaki, it says to bring up from thence the Ark of the Most High, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the Ark of the Most High upon a new cart. All right, you see, it is being, the Ark of Company is being moved and was not to what, be touched. It says, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Geba, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons, the sons of Abinadab, Drave the new cart. All right, so they were driving the cart. All right, verse four. <clears throat> and David and all the house. Oh, slag! Like, I'm gonna skip the part. Verse four. It says, and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of the Most High. And Ahio went before the ark, and David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and of pastries and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. And when they came to, to Nuckin's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the Ark of the Most High and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it, okay? The animals, you know, the animals uh, that were in the midst shook, you know, shook the cart and almost had the Ark of the Covenant fall, and it was touched by Uzzah. But what happened? Verse 7, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and the Most High smote him there for his error, and there he died by the Ark of the, of the Most High. All right, and one may and one may read this account and be like, damn, you know, he was actually catching it from falling. But hey, the Lord instructions were the Lord instructions. The Lord thoughts are his thoughts, man. Okay, and that and that came down to a detail. All right, that came down there to a detail. So hey, these scriptures. Are written for our learning for us to take heed upon to, especially in the times we're living in, as we're coming to, as we're moving about, you know, in our day to day whereabouts, and and especially the times that we're about to enter into concerning Jacob's trouble. All right, because hey, the time now we're beginning the sorrows, and the times are about to heighten, they're about to intensify. Okay, so it's going to matter about the details even more. So this is just something to consider, meditate upon, take heed to, a you know, to. Just be aware of and, and Lord willing, Lord willing, okay, Lord willing, be on point, sharp, keen, wise, intelligent, and you know to the to the best of our ability, you know to the you know to the you know to the best possible you know possibility, you know. But hey, cause we, hey, we at the end of the day we want salvation, we want to be delivered, we want to be saved, man. Okay, by the Lord, we want to be we want to be shown mercy by the Lord, we want to receive grace. From the Lord, okay. So these are just these are you know fearful accounts of uh, uh, examples that life and death came down to the details. All right, it, it came down to the details. So the details are not just because, just because a some some things may seem small. A is not it's not so small, especially concerning the ministry. All right, and it, and it, damn, you know you can pff, boy. You can life and death. All right, I'm gonna say life and death, man. Okay, so Lord willing, the point was made with these um uh, these these few accounts. All right, Lord willing, it was also edifying and also still encouraging to those that believe. All right, because hey, we have hope, we have comfort. Okay, and it's a balance. All right, it's a balance, man. Cause these these scriptures are still comforting. All right, the Lord is still merciful. Hey, but we understand the Lord is still our steer at the same time. The Lord is still serious. All right, the Lord, the aid our Lord is a jealous power. The Lord doesn't play. Okay, so with that, I want to end off by giving all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Repent, Yahweh Shai is coming back. Repent, Yahweh Shai is coming back. All right, Shalom. Keep the faith, Shalom.